What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to our channel, guys. I'm Rod. I'm here with my dad. Rod Sr. And we are Bridging, Bridging the, the gap. gap. Yes, sir. The boys is back with another fire reaction video for you. If you enjoy our reaction videos, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Also, drop a comment and let us know what we should react to next. Make sure you turn on your post notifications so you're notified every single time we drop a new video. And if you like our videos, but you want to see the uncut, unedited versions, then check out our Patreon. Links in the description. Also, we've dropped some new merch. We got mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, and all kind of cool stuff with our logo on it. So check it out. All right, Dad. Um, so last time we listened to uh, a Childish Gambino album. It was called uh, Because of the Internet. Really interesting concept album. You enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, Childish Gambino, he's a pretty busy guy. Makes movies, TV shows, all kind of stuff. So he took a hiatus from that 2013 release, and he didn't make any music until 2016. Okay. So in 2016, he decided he didn't want to be a rapper anymore. He wanted to put out an R&B soul album. Really? Yeah. Okay. So um, <clears throat> that's when we received Awaken My Love by Childish Gambino. <laughs> okay. So uh, Awaken My Love is his third studio album. And it was um, released on December 2nd, 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a fusion of psychedelic soul, funk, and R&B influences. And it's a very bold departure from his hip-hop style of his previous work. And it was produced by Danny Glover, or um, Danny Glover, uh, <laughs> Donald Glover. I put that yeah, in Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was produced by him, Charles Gabriel, Donald Glover, and his longtime collab collaborator, Ludwig, that Ludwig. we heard yeah, uh, yeah, on the last him. album. Okay. Yep. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get right into it. Um, this is the album cover. What do you think about that? It looks kind of reminds me of some kind of Egyptian... Uh, African type of um, art. Yeah. I have just, for lack of a better term, yeah. That's what it kind of reminds me of. But then I, that's kind of weird. You can see between those spokes or whatever, that, well, I, that's the only way I can describe it. Yeah. You can see his hairline. Like, you see that? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. You can see that. So that's, that's, it's like some type of um, head garment or something for some kind of ritual or something. Free your mind and your ass will follow. Maggie Brain. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, it looks like Funkadelics. Looks like ding, 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 Yeah. It took some inspiration from there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so old, one old of the school. annotations for the album cover says, listening to this album, the sonic sounds fusion of instrumentation and constant drums. It's clear that Donald was channeling George Clinton through this piece, the cover is also a new age spin of Funkadelic's Maggot Brain, mm -hmm. one of Gambino and his father's favorite albums. The album art was <laughs> hidden in plain sight in the episode nine of the Juneteenth episode of uh, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Oh man, Atlanta is such a dope show because there's so many little Easter eggs and like so many like little, little very small details that it's a great show to like rewatch over and over because uh -huh. you'll catch some. Every single time you watch it, okay. Atlanta is such a good show. I'm gonna have to revisit. The you Atlanta. should definitely check it out. Uh, it's so many. There's just so many layers to it. But anyway, uh, we'll get into the first track of this album, and okay. it's titled "Me and Yo Mama." Hmm. And this is produced by Childish Gambino and Ludwig. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, now I know what they're talking about when they said psychedelic soul, because that's, that's definitely funkadelic, psychedelic yeah. soul. Mm. Gambino I just listened to. Yeah. Wow. I did say he had a nice voice. Mm -hmm.
don't sound good. <laughs> what they doing? Now they that's not, what they doing with the music is. That is the epic six minute me and your mama. What did you think about that one, Dad? I didn't know what to expect when you said he went to R and B, but man, that was that was a nice uh, entry. Yeah, I didn't expect all of that—the harmonies and the the type of music that um, uh, the instruments and the production that he's he's uh, using uh, at, used on this particular song. Because you know we just got to listen to his rap ver his rap album, mm -hmm. and then. You know, I, I could see a glimpse of his talent there as far as the music, mu the musicality of his uh, um, uh, expertise. But then, then you you know, you're like, oh, dude, because you remember I said, hey, this guy's got a really nice voice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you always wonder when you hear rappers that have really nice voices how they would if they would ever want to translate it over to R and B and mm -hmm. you know, give at least play around with it, you yeah. know, make an album like that. He's done it, so this is his first one out the gate. That I've heard and, and it was fantastic. Yeah, and I like the um, and, and and when you described it, you said psychedelic uh soul, and I was like, damn, what kind of soul was psychedelic soul? I was trying to uh in my back of my mind go back to my library in my mind and go, who, who was like psychedelic soul? But then when you said you showed me a maggot brain, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said that, that that's it right there. That's it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely psychedelic, so for sure. So, uh, um, you like the instrumentation on there? Um, oh man, they did some cool stuff at the end with their instruments, man. Yeah, and then you had the dude with his hand on the uh, keyboard just holding it down, going, Ooh. and then you had all these other little stuff going on. The it, it, man, it was, it's cool. It, I liked it. Yeah, what'd you think about his uh, uh, well, his vocals? Like, he, he was very passionate, and uh, me and your mama. Yeah, and yeah. he was kind of like almost screaming. Yeah, the first beginning he was, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and I was like, whoa, whoa, yeah. but he's passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very passionate. He wanted to get his 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 point across, but mm -hmm. at the, yeah, he said, nah, this ain't no puppy love, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, yeah, I like the I like the song. I like the the message it was sending. Mm -hmm. Me and your mama. <laughs> Word. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and roll to the next track. This is produced uh, by Childish Gambino, and this is track number two. It's titled Have Some Love. Have Some Love. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Track number two, Have Some Love. And uh, I just wanted to mention, too, this this album, I did, I, I guess I say this a lot because I play the albums that the people are asking for, mm -hmm. but also like to play the albums that I enjoy listening to. Mm -hmm. So because the internet was requested uh, quite a bit, mm -hmm. but the reason I played that is because this album has been requested a ton. Really? Especially from our TikTok audience. They've seen a, some of the videos that we put up there, and they just really, really want to hear what you have to say about just the sound of this album. It's so mm -hmm. unique. Mm -hmm. It's also just from an artist that it's like, nobody expected anything like this <laughs> from Childish Gambino. <laughs> right. And it, it, it hit the world, and it was just like, oh, he shit. Blew him this away, is huh? amazing. So, uh, yeah, the people really just... Uh, wanted to hear you listen to this album and uh, t tell him what you think about just his vocal performance and the instrumentation and everything about this album. So Bad. very highly requested. And I think the people are going to be very excited to see what you think. So okay. we'll go ahead and roll into track two, Have Some Love. Have some love for a brother, mate. <laughs> Uh-oh. Have a word. Seventies feel to it. Yeah. This is that bass line, man. Yeah. Bass play. Oh, that bass line is just.
these little switch ups, man. Yeah. Like he goes right into it, but it's smooth. Yeah. Quick though. Track number two, Have Some Love. What'd you think about that one, Dad? I enjoyed that song, too. Yeah. That song reminded me of something I've heard before in the past. You know, it had a, a, a sort of like a reminiscent to kind of... Uh, I, it, but it, it was a good song, though. I liked it. It was just... I was trying to relate it to one a song I've heard before back in the 70s, and I could... My mind just went brain dead. Can you get it. to that? Uh, I never heard that. No. That's by George Clinton, though. I probably heard that song. That's probably where I heard it from. On that, I, I used to listen to Mag Brain all the time, but I haven't heard it in a long time. So mm-hmm. it might have been on Mag Brain. Uh, Free your mind, and your ass will follow. That was another funkadelic, um, um, popular album. I wonder if there's any information about a sample or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, no. Song sample has some love. Hotel room by Opie. That's, that's a song that sampled this song. That's not the... Okay, all right. Well, yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's definitely got that 70s vibe mm-hmm. and uh, instrumentation. and uh, <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. That's, that's so cool for him, you know, because that's way, you know, before his time. Right, right. For him to capture that. So he's he's definitely, but I'm sure why he's doing movies and everything else, he's done so much research on histories. Mm-hmm. Of music and movies and stuff, you know. So I, it doesn't surprise me that it, that he doesn't have a deep knowledge of, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Like that. Yeah. So cool. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and roll to the next track. This is track number three, and it's titled "Boogeyman." Oh, this is produced by Childish Gambino and Ludwig, <laughs> and uh, here we go. Keeps the scared children. Well, oh, man. what do you think about the message of uh, "Have Some Love"? Have some love for your brother. Have some love for one another. Yeah, a typical theme back there in uh, when in the seventies and uh, late sixties, uh, uh, leading up to the mid to late seventies, because it was more like uh, it was a lot of the country was in turmoil. Uh, Vietnam War was going on, so it was a lot of protesting, and then you know you had uh, civil rights things still still going on, and things like that. And then there was a lot of songs like this theme songs like that because they had one you know they had one I, it reminds me of this song back in the day war what is it good for mm-hmm. you know they had mm-hmm. songs like that you mm-hmm. know and and a whole bunch man there was so many different kinds of songs like this to that theme yeah love your brother and this stuff like that so mm-hmm. yeah that that's what that that took me back to sort of like that era in yeah. time you know what i mean yeah it was cool. a good song yeah awesome all right so we'll roll into boogeyman track three um here we go. Okay. With a gun in your head, I'm a boogie man. That's definitely Funkadelic style right here. <laughs> 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 
But if she's scared of me, how can we be free? Oh, they jamming right there. star more on that song was the drummer the pianist or that bass player they all was, they just all was crazy, crazy on there like, yeah this chat there was a battle yeah track three boogeyman what'd you think about that one there? <laughs> that was a good one that reminds me when we were, we were small yeah you know boogeyman was like something your mom well, my mom <laughs> you know if you was getting out of line all right you know the boogeyman gonna get you tonight <laughs> you know uh you know we say that to each other you know children the boogeyman gonna get you uh-huh. so we be looking in the closet and stuff at night <laughs> yeah, he's in the closet <laughs> yeah that's uh that was a good one <laughs> uh, see <laughs> yeah yeah uh <laughs> So yeah. it says here that he uses this image to illustrate racial fear in the United States, specifically mm. involving African Americans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, with your gun, with a gun in your hand, I'm the boogeyman. Uh, talking about Ain't that uh, some police brutality. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. He's a deep guy, man. Charles Gambino, very. He's like I, I would even, uh, you know. A artist like a uh, Kendrick Lamar, like there's nothing that he's gonna say or do that's accidental or just mm. to say it. Mm-hmm. He's always gonna make a statement and have a meaning behind every every single piece of their artwork. Right, and uh, that's why people really really gravitate and love his music. So and I'm starting to see that as I learn more about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's actually a, kind of a shame like that he doesn't make more music because he's really good at it <laughs> but it's like i mean like when, when do you find time like between right. you know making movies and shows and right all this other stuff it's right. like when do you when do you <laughs> find time to go make an album and then an album like this is crazy okay we'll go ahead and roll to the next track this track number four is titled zombies yeah I, that's i don't know how you do it with either man i was like shit. he's like this is a really good album you had to put a whole lot of time and effort into that you right know what I mean? right it's so quality so far what i heard man it's just it's quality, just top notch. Mm-hmm. And like all these uh, songs, uh, sound like it's mostly live instrumentation. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, it's this is a cool album. Yeah. All right, here's track four: Zombies, produced by Charles Gambino and Ludwig. All right. Damn. You can they hear it all nice. breathing, <laughs> breathing down <laughs> your spine. <laughs>
the sound. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> It's the same thing as what they used to call a Wawa. But if it is the same thing, I never heard it used like that. Mm. I mean, he made it. He drew it out, made it go like useless. He was making it go. You know, doing all these little <laughs> fluctuations. I'm like, damn. Yeah. I never heard it like that before. Yeah. That was very, very unique. Yeah, for sure. So that's uh, track number four, Zombies. What did you think? I was trying to think of what he was mainly talking about. Was he talking about like, because um, he kept on mentioning profit. Eating you for profit. Yeah, yeah, so I was thinking, was he talking about corporate America and they're the zombies and they eating us for profit? Yeah, I think so. And I think also he might be kind of talking about um, like uh, how people like latch on to the culture of um, like hip hop and stuff mm -hmm. and uh, profit off of it mm -hmm. without like giving back to it and stuff like that. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, wow. Because in the annotation, it, it might be a stretch, but they're kind of comparing because Charles Gambino does talk a lot about like cultural appropriation. And there's one episode in particular. It's. Um, it's a, <laughs> it's about this uh, uh this white kid who's doing hip hop and he's like getting real popular and then the other artists the black artists that still hating on him. Well, he's he's just like looking at him like this is corny, bro. Like this is a corny attempt at you being like us. What do the white guy? Yeah, yeah. Is, like they said, he's being corny, yeah, trying to be like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's getting all the attention and all the money, uh -huh. and it's just this knockoff version. Could it be that he's just good at what he's doing, but, or maybe he's just you know it's it's come everybody you know like everybody copies off of everybody companies copy off of each other. They set trends and they follow different you know. So he was just following a trend. But in the episode, they kind of make it seem like. Um, uh, very purposefully, like he's not being himself. Okay, he's he's doing what he sees mm -hmm. and imitating it, and L then like a, an actor, possibly. So what's wrong with an actor acts like he's not? He's not. Pre he's pretending he's not being himself. How come the white boy can't do it? Cause it's corny, man. It was. I mean, good? he can. You can do was whatever. He good? You can do whatever you want. Yeah, this is America. He no, can. that's the that's the point. They're saying it is like, nah, it's not even good. But they're just eating it up because it's it's like just taking from the the culture and making it, watering it down and, <laughs> and feeding it to people that are eating Look, it all up. Lots of white boys say, I don't care. I'm getting my paper. Forget y'all. Oh no, for sure. <laughs> you should definitely do that. Yeah. It's not like because I don't. Th I wouldn't even compare it to like Eminem because Eminem he really came from that. That's really right. Who he right. Was. Yep. That's who he was, and he was doing him. Mm -hmm. You know. But like, but uh, this guy's just learned learned good imitation. Yeah, and he's it's just, just like he just you had to see he the got episode. it down good. Yeah, nah, not even good. He it wasn't was even just, good. No, he was. You know, I thought maybe he'd being a good chameleon. You know, nah, he wasn't. But no, nah, it's a it's an interesting episode, and they they kind of mention that in the annotation of this. So I ah. think that's maybe maybe. He's, so he get more more props just because of who he is more than so than him. Actually embracing the art and respecting them yeah. and having a real talent for it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, I don't know. That might be somewhere where he's coming from on here. Just like the cultural appropriation and mm -hmm. uh, just people taking taking and profiting from stuff and not giving back to where they got it from. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a jam right there. And his vocals just really... 
His <laughs> his vocals really uh, remind me of Rick James on there. Yeah, he did. You you hit that man. That was that was spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. way he was like holding out some of his notes right. and stuff. Yeah, it just really. I, I feel like he was channeling his uh, his it's inner, inner Rick, Rick James. James for sure. Okay. And I love uh, what's that song? Fire and Desire. Mm, Fire and Desire. Man, that Rick James got so many. So man. F- that that song. I don't know. That song is just like you talking crazy about him and good. Tina Marie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's such a good song. It's scary. I discovered it like, like I don't know, a couple years ago, and <laughs> oh, it's just so good. I don't even know how you said you discovered it a couple of years ago. You probably heard that a thousand times when you was growing up as a kid. You just pretty just tuned it out. Daddy yeah, in there nah, playing. I didn't know. Daddy in there playing his old people music. <laughs> <laughs> probably because I, I don't know when I came across that. Yeah, like on my own. I was like, yo, this is flames. It is. It is. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and roll to the next track. This is track number five is titled "Riot." All right, and this is produced by Childish Cambino. Hmm. Here we go, track number five, right? Not a lot. Collaborations on here. No. Just him and Ludwig. The horn section is killing it right now. Yeah. Nice harmonies. This song is like in your face. Yeah, it came in. It came in like that. Track number five, Riot. What do you think about that one, Dad? That song definitely created a, a riot type feeling. You know, it's all in your face. It was coming at you. Chaotic. Chaotic, yeah, all of that. It was a good song, though. I like the horn section. The whole thing, I mean, the arrangements and everything was great to me. Mm-hmm. You know, the harmonies, the, the vocals on it, it was great. I, I liked it. Oh. Sounds like... Uh there it took some inspiration from Sly and the Family Sly Stone. Sly and the Family Stone, and that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. That sounds like a Sly song. Actually, it could have been a Sly song. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way he get, you know, he approached it, mm-hmm. that would have been something Sly with a similar sound would sound like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, we'll go ahead and roll to ne- the next track. Uh, this is probably the most popular song from this album. I would be surprised if you haven't heard this song. I think I heard this song. Yeah, I think you ding, have too. Ding, 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 ding. It's something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, track six, Redbone, uh, Childish Gambino, and Ludwig mm-hmm. on the production. And yeah, you definitely heard this song. But the people cannot. I never knew that was him. I think we, uh, I think we talked about it one time. You th- I think you thought it was Macy Gray. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> Full circle moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I knew we would get around to this one day, but yeah, this has been, this this particular song and this album, the album has been highly requested, but they really, really want to see you react to this song. Okay. So uh, here is track six, Redbone. Yeah. Yeah. 
killing. It's nice, man. came in there at the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, All right, that is track number six, Redbone. What do you think about that one, Dad? I like Redbone. Yeah. Yeah, I've always liked Redbone. I don't even know how I came about hearing it for the first time, but when I heard it, I was like, whoa, who yeah. was that? And I did, like you said, <laughs> I thought it was a duh. Macy Macy Gray. Yeah. And I was like, uh, you said, oh, oh, it's not Macy Gray. I said, yes, it is. <laughs> I think we argued about that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, a nice song, man. I like the whole arrangement, the instruments. Uh, Redbone, though, I wasn't getting what he was talking about because uh, Redbones, we, we refer that to light skinned women, mm-hmm. uh, real light skinned women. And uh, we, uh, I, I, he was like, stay woke. You know, niggas creeping. Uh, you know, I was just like, what, what's, he try- what's he trying to say? Uh, so the annotation here reads that uh, Redbone is about paranoia and infidelity in a relationship. Okay. As a slang term, Redbone distinguishes a lighter skinned black person of mixed race. Bino fears that his efforts to keep this woman satisfied will drive her away. Um, no, no, there was never mixed race, though. It was just like light skinned black woman. Okay, if he wants to say that. Daylight, I wake up feeling like you won't play right. I used to know, but now that shit don't feel right. Mm-hmm. It made me put away my pride. So he thinks she going to cheat on because she light-skinned. Everybody's going be, everybody to be after her. So mm-hmm. she gotta, he got to stay woke or she got to stay woke because they're going to be creeping up on her trying to steal her. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're going to find you. Mm-hmm. Going to catch you sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stay woke and never close your eyes. If you want it, you can have it. If you need it, you better believe in something. We can make it. Okay. All right. Yeah, Redbone is an absolute slap for the century. And uh They won a Grammy, huh? Oh yeah. The best traditional R and B performance at the twenty eighteen Grammys. Yeah, that's such a good song. Yeah. It is. Um, cool. All right, we'll go ahead and roll into the next track. This is track number seven. It's titled California. California. <laughs> California. <laughs> Yeah, not, not that, that one. one. We already listened to that. <laughs> <laughs> this is California by Charles Gambino. It's produced by Charles Gambino and Ludwig. Man, I mean, California songs that I heard. I mean, they didn't get out there. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, there's so many good ones too. Yeah, Hotel California. Oh, I love that. That's a fire joint. Yep, yep. All right, here is California track seven. Here we go. So that is California. What do you think about that one? Is this sort of like a humorous kind of uh, um, reggae accent? 
Hey, yeah. what the, what the, get look on you. Yeah, it's definitely goofy. Uh, DC Young Fly is a, is a popular, uh, well, he was a popular internet figure, but now he's just a popular comedian and oh, uh, he wants personality. To, so when he moves to California, you want to hang out with him. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not him in California, maybe sport a DC Fly is based in Atlanta. It's actually, uh, DC Young Fly, uh, it's kind of sad. His, uh, his, uh, the mother of his children just passed away uh-huh. uh, from like uh, complications during a plastic surgery. So, oh, that sucks. Really sad. Really sad. He's got like how many kids he got? Three. He had three kids with her. Oh, that's a hell of a way to to pass away. Yeah, but Man. you know what? He has been so um, just positive and um, yeah. Really uplifting during the whole thing. Like it's super sad. This recently happened. Yeah, right? like probably like a couple of weeks ago. Wow. Um, you never seen this guy DC Young Fly? Yeah, <laughs> you seen him before? Uh, there's a, there's a um, uh, some kind of a comedy thing on there with a bunch of these guys on Netflix. On yeah, yeah, he's on a podcast. There's two. Uh, there's uh-huh. three of them. There's him, Chico Bean, and uh, Carlos Miller. Yeah, and they they have a podcast called Eighty Five South. And uh, yeah, they just did a Netflix special. That, yeah, that I just saw released. it. He's taking his shirt off and <laughs> acting all crazy. He's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got really popular from a uh, while and out. He he. Well, first uh, he was on the internet. He used to make vines, and then mm-hmm. he got on Instagram and got really popular. And then he got casted to Wild and Out, and that just really blew him up. Yeah. And now he's Nick just Cannon, huh? now he's just everywhere. He's super wow. super. Uh, He's so funny. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, I got it marked to watch too. I yeah, yeah. To watch it. Uh, it was I mean, okay. Watch that I watched it. It was, it was, it was okay. okay. Yeah, because I didn't think they was hard hitting comedians. To yeah, me. they're not you know, like they they're not like stand up comedians. It's more like they just kind of get up there silly. and just be stupid. Uh-huh. Like it's kind of funny though. It was, yeah. I watched it. It was yeah. it was only like an hour long. So, but anyway, California. What did you think about the song? It was goofy, like you said. <laughs> you know, it was one of them. Like I probably. If I was lit, if I had this whole album, I every other time I listened to it, I would listen to this song. You know, first I'd listen to the whole song on first play, maybe a couple of days ago, uh, go by, and I <clears throat> play this album again. I would skip it, mm. and then the next time I played it, I'd play it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like. I'd have to be in the mood for yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of a silly song, but he's just kind of ba- kind of breaking down like. Um, I enjoyed the flutes in this yeah, song. Great though, flutes, mm-hmm. excellent flutes. Um, did you get kind of what he was talking about? Like how the girl she wants to move to California and mm-hmm. she wants to get famous, but she's gonna end up lip- being broke in a <laughs> apartment that she can't pay for. <laughs> Yeah, so many songwriters have written songs about people going to California yeah. and end up pumping gas. Yeah, you know, that same <laughs> thing. yeah well, that, it, that's and that's true. That's why so many songwriters write about it because it's happened to probably you know how, who I don't know how many millions, right. well, not many millions, many thousands of people that's done that. For sure, everybody's out there as a star. See there, you doing the same thing I was doing. You pass it to me. I pass it to mm-hmm. you. It's contagious. And my eyes getting heavy like I've been drinking or something. Oh, I don't God. know. I was like, what? I ain't had anything to drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and move to the next track. This is track number eight is titled "Terrified." This is produced by Charles Gambino and Ludwig. Um, What's it called? Charles what? Uh, it's called Terrified. Terrified. Yeah. Okay, where did I get the Charles at? Oh. His name is his Charles. Name, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, well, it sounded like you said it. Was, oh, well, go ahead. Produced by Childish Gambino and Ludwig. Okay. Here is track eight, Terrified. Terrified. Uh-oh. That sounds scary. Are you terrified? Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh. There's a bottom to the top of a moment You won't always be around Catch a nigga coming Yeah. 
hypnotize you with that. Yeah. <laughs> Who you that? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> nah. That's him. Mm. Oh, that's query. Oh, I guess lungs on him. That is terrified. What'd you think about that one, Dad? Made you terrified talking about you can't run and hide from me. No, this uh, J.D. McCrary at the end, man, I was thinking to myself, I said, boy, usually when you hear singers like that, I always kind of think back to when they they probably was babies. And you hear, them, you hear a baby in the store scream so damn loud, you're like, damn, that baby's loud. That was that baby right there. <laughs> <laughs> that boy got some long, he got some pipes on him, man. That was a nine-year-old. Huh? J.D. McCrary was nine years old at the time the song was recorded. He was nine years old singing that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. That sounded like a grown man there. Yeah, he killed that. Uh, he said to the Fader magazine, I sang Michael Jackson's Who Loving You, and I guess Gambino liked it, so he invited me to a studio in Glendale, California. I never actually met him in person because he was in Europe, but he was on Skype the whole time I was there. Wow. Yeah. Whoa! Get out of here! Crazy, huh? Yeah, that is crazy. I ain't never heard a kid that young sound like that. Yeah, he sounded great. Yeah, he did. That was a great. That was a great song too. By yeah. the way, yeah, I love. I love that song. That was great. Yeah. Terrified. Terrified. And he made you sound. He made you give you that feel like something's coming for you. Yeah, it was very eerie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That organ throughout the whole mm -hmm. thing and uh, fantastic production. Cool, we'll go ahead and move into the next track. This is track number nine, and it's titled Baby Boy. Um, okay. Yeah, and this one is produced by Ludwig and Childish Gambino. Mm, did they play it in the movie Baby Boy? This was released way after that movie was, oh, okay. was made. <laughs> mm. Baby Boy. Track number nine, Baby Boy. Here we go. Let me grab the old boy by the back of his neck. Call your mama now. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's a classic. <laughs> yeah, it is. I love that movie. <laughs> Here's track nine, baby boy. No, no relation to the time of this movie. <laughs> all right, all right.
track number nine. Baby boy, what do you think about that one, Dad? I mean, I was trying to figure out where this song was talking about. Did she just have a baby and they just taking a baby away from her? And what was the deal? Um, I think he was saying that like he was maybe he the relationship wasn't working out, but they had the kid, but he, he just hopes that she doesn't take the baby away from him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um Man, that song was great. Yeah, that song was really good. Uh, on Baby Boy, Donald addresses his son, born earlier in 2016. He expresses joy at this new chapter in life, but also has fears as a new father, whether from external pressures or from his own struggles in sustaining a relationship with the mother of his child. Throughout the track, Donald focuses on the specific fear of having his son taken away from him by the boy's mother should their relationship fall and she retains custody of the child. Donald expresses here that though their love may not work out, that he will never stop him from loving their son and wanting to be in his life. And it's musically influenced by Sly and the Family Stones, Just Like a Baby, off their 1971 album, There's a Riot Going On. Oh, okay. The heavy influence of soul artists. Uh, Curtis Mayfield on that too? Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I wasn't feeling Curtis Mayfield in that for some reason. No? No. Maybe, maybe, uh, like if I listen a little closer, maybe, uh, but I didn't just, it didn't just jump out at me, mm-hmm. you know? Sly, yeah. For Sly sure. Stem, family Stone, definitely. Yeah, but definitely a, a very uh, personal sounding song. All the pain, all the tears, many nights, many years. This yeah, love for he's me is fading. freaking out, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, that's. Uh, I feel like that's a, a fear that probably many many men uh, fear in having a relationship with the woman that uh, the mother of their child, and they're not going to be with them, and. You know, but he uh, he also kind of addresses the son in that outro. He had a couple lines. There was a time before you, and there's a time after you. Though these bodies are not our own, walk tall, little one, walk tall. Let me hold you. Let me hold you. Can I hold you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely a really deep personal song. There's beautiful instrumentation. Those that that uh, that organ crescendo at the end, mm-hmm. and just oh man, I was. That was so tight. That was, dope. that was just like, whoa. That was really good. Dope, dope. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because uh, the album starts with me and your mama, and then, uh, right. you know, right, right. talking about Redbone, and then that kind of sounds like she wanted to go to California, and he's like, Have you lost your fucking mind? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's terrified. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. All right, so uh, here is the next track. Uh, this is an instrumental track and it's titled The Night Me and Your Mama Met. <laughs> and this is Childish Gambino and Ludwig again, along with some help from Gary Clark Jr. Hmm. So here we go. Track 10 The Night Me and Your Mama Met. That's Danny Clark's son. Is it? No. Oh. <laughs> Just made that up. Because a lot of these artists, I know they got kids, man. I know it's they, possible, yeah. You know, for they sure. popping off and then showing, you know, their little musical talents. Mm-hmm. You know? Doom, 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 doom. Guitar sound like it's right here with you, know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Track 
track 10, The Night Me and Your Mama Met. What do you think about that one, Dad? I enjoyed that, man. You know, anytime we got to do with bands and instruments and different things like that, that's my thing, man. I love hearing that, uh, the creativity when when that uh, when you hear something put down on an album. But this right here was nice. It was uh, like it just the guitar, man, was just, it felt like the guy was sitting right next to me playing yeah. it, you know what I mean? <laughs> And then the, uh, the 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 choir was cool too. That was a mm. nice touch. Yeah, they were beautiful. And and uh, I did I when I saw that Glockenspiel, I was like, I, what is that? I never heard of that before. And then when you showed me a picture of it, mm -hmm. it looks more like a, 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 a xylophone. A xylophone, but double. You know, so because usually a xylophone is just one piece, mm -hmm. and it was like side by side, yeah. like, but that's what it's called, clock and spiel, so I learned something today. Yeah, and apparently from the uh, liner notes here, it says that uh, Donald Glover play, played the uh, glock and spiel uh -huh. on here. Okay. Glock and spiel. Did you look up who uh, Clark was? Uh, no, I did not. Where was his name at? Oh, Gary Clark. Oh, he was the guitarist. Gary Clark Jr. Stanley Clark was a bass player. He's out of Texas. Gary Clark Jr. is uh, an American guitarist and actor based out of Austin, Texas. Du -du 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 -du. Yeah, if he was Stanley Clark's son, he would have said it. Was said it yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, that is the night me and your mama met. <laughs> and uh, that was right. uh, the second to last track. The last track here is track number 11. This is titled Stand Tall. Mm -hmm. Tell his baby boy stand tall. Mm -hmm. Oh like yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here is stand tall. Track eleven is produced by Charles Gambino and Ludwig. Yeah, because on the rap record he was talking about his kid. <laughs> As a kid, he had to learn how to walk on his own. Mm. Oh yeah, you remember that one song? Yeah, because he uh, was home by himself. Right, he had to learn he had how to crawl. crawl yeah, yeah, walk. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So now this on this one, you know, kind of like. Full Circle Mummies mm. giving his kid advice to stand tall. Stand tall. There we go. All right, here's track 11, Stand Tall. All right, bet. The sun is rising over streets so barren Since the evening, colors flash before my eyes I feel like a child so young and new In 92, I listened outside We may cry alone, I feel we know Where all of this is headed But my mama said many layers. 
words in this song. Yeah, I know. It's nice. That's track number 11, Stand Tall. What did you think about that one, Dad? Man, I think that was, I don't know, man. There was so many good songs on this album. I think that was the best one, though. You like that one the best? Yeah, Yeah. I think so. Yeah, Um, yeah, because it had so many uh, different switch-ups and transitions, and then it it would, you know, give you a little bit of guitar, and it would pull it out, and then you do some flute, and then he'd take that out, and then he'd hit you with something else, and then he brought them all in together. It was just so much stuff going on with this song, and I enjoyed it. The vocals, yeah, everything, man, and and the you know as a as the, the album as a whole, I was thinking it had more stronger influence to uh, the uh, the Funkadelics uh, as far as um, style, but I think the vocals had more um, uh, influence of Sly and the Family Stone, like you, you know he was he, some of the comments said. Mm-hmm. I think the the vocals sounded more Sly, but the style of music was more funkadelic. Okay. So they yeah. kind of like combined Find the two. Both. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so overall, man, I was really, I was impressed with this because, you know, I heard the rap record. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, it was like, okay, yeah, it was cool, you know, but this right here, when he transitioned, because I always, I was, every time, like I said, every time I hear artists with a real nice voice, I'm wondering what they do, how it sound if they translate it into R&B. Mm-hmm. And this one was like, okay, he did not disappoint. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a nice voice. Yeah. You know, he's, he, you know, and and uh, the production, mm-hmm. yeah, it's spot on. It's spot on. Yeah, they worked with some great musicians. Ludwig and Childish Gambino are a great pairing when it comes to, you know, creating the sound that they they perform on and mm-hmm. and I love this uh the flute solo on this track <laughs> yeah. and then even so the flute part uh for for whatever reason they decided to auto tune Childish Gambino's vocals at the same part as the flute solo and that was just like mm-hmm. perfect that was it nice wasn't so it? dope yeah. <laughs> sounds so cool yeah, so yeah. uh yeah I, I love that song and and this album is a, a really it's uh, one of those albums, it's, it's like a, a piece of art, you know. It's a, to me, um, this if it's to me, I don't know what when you consider something a classic, mm-hmm. uh, something like you know, but uh, this right here, that's a keeper, right? Yeah, there. for sure, definitely. That's, that's definitely one of those albums that'll stand the test of time, and uh, yep. even the fact that I mean, he's pulling from a different time period and making it in today's mm-hmm. uh, music landscape where nothing sounds like this. And, and it, you can see his rap influence still in some of his lines too. That was mm-hmm. another thing that I noticed about him. I was like, oh, okay, he's he, you know, he's the dude. He, he's 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 a great artist. Yeah, for sure. I, I you know I, I definitely got much respect for him now. Though you know, I never I never <laughs> knew, especially I could, I had Redbone. I, I know I got that on my playlist. Yeah, it, it, it pops up on there when I'm doing my you know my playlist and it's random and here it go. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. yeah, but I never knew it was him. Like yeah, I said, yeah, you yeah. know. Like, but still, man. Uh, uh, with that aside, and all these other songs, man. Yeah. This this album was dope. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Charles Gambino is a dope artist. Uh, and yeah, this just show. I I really that's why I wanted to play these back to back because I wanted you to see like the the, the contrast. Yeah, the, the two. contrast mm-hmm. of the two and mm-hmm. just how talented <laughs> you'd have to be to. First, not only make a rap album that's really interesting really good. and uh, great rapping, great production, mm-hmm. great concept, great storytelling, all of that in a rap album. And then to just completely switch and make something like this. So well, I, I wouldn't be surprised, man. You'd be interviewing this guy and all of a sudden he'd take off flying. <laughs> He's Superman. For real. Nah. He's, He's Superman. This dude is amazing. He's <laughs> definitely one of the most talented <laughs> human beings on the planet. So yeah. shout out to Childish Gambino. I'm glad you enjoyed the album. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Also drop a comment and let us know what we should react to next. 
Uh, turn on your post notifications so you're notified every single time we drop a new video. Also, check out our Patreon if you want to see our videos uncut and unedited. And if you'd really like to support the channel, cop you a mug. Get you one of these. Or a t-shirt, or a hoodie, so cool. or a phone case, or a sticker. Yep. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching our videos, guys. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.